Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life and we are talking all things true crime. Today we're going to be talking about a case that is hot in the media right now. It's a new case, it's a recent case, it's an ongoing case, and it's a heartbreaking case. And quite honestly, it also is a case that is very angering. On Monday, June 13th, just a few days ago, Officers were called to a home in Round Lake, Illinois, after a mother found her three little children lifeless in a bedroom. What happened to these innocent children? What led to their deaths? It's, there's so many questions, guys, and it just gets crazier and crazier as we break it down. So let's break it all down as we know it and get to the bottom of this horribly tragic case. Let's get right into it. Tend to Life with Annie Elise starts right now. Today's video is sponsored by Simple, a nutrition app that helps you keep track of your health and your diet. With Simple's weight care app, weight loss and a healthy diet have become as simple as ever. So much so that over 10 million users have already tried the Simple app. That is a lot. So go to the video description box, click that link, and take Simple's short quiz. At the end of the quiz, you're going to be given a 56% off discount for the next three months plan. Now let me just talk realness with you for a second. For those of you who don't already know, intermittent fasting is one of the most popular, healthy, and effective weight loss methods out there. It's also trusted by hundreds of millions worldwide. Intermittent fasting is actually ancient and has been around forever. And all you have to do with it is alternate between eating and fasting periods. So for example, if you fast during a 16 hour window, say while you're asleep and then you're getting ready for work in the morning, you've done the fasting, then you can eat for an eight hour window. That's how simple it is, guys. And what I love about intermittent fasting is that it is not a diet. I do not do well with diets of any sort. So it doesn't tell you what you can't or can eat, but instead, it asks you just to eat within a specific window of time each day. It's a simple lifestyle change that will jumpstart weight loss and better health for you. And if you don't know anything about fasting, that is totally okay. What's so great is that simple makes it simple. Simple will adjust your customized program, teach you what intermittent fasting is, give you daily support, and easy life hacks that'll help you succeed to make starting intermittent fasting easy and mindful. Simple will also keep track of your eating habits while giving you personalized insights to help you adjust your customized fasting program as needed. And guys, don't just take my word for it. Check out the rating in the App Store. I don't even think my podcast has this good of ratings, guys, which means people clearly love this. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description box, click that link, and take Simple's short quiz. And you can use my personal promo code, 10 to life and receive 56% off for the first three months. Go check it out and tell me what you guys think. Thank you, Simple, for sponsoring today's video, and thank you to all of you viewers for understanding that sponsors are essential to the channel if we want to grow it to a place where I can give you true crime all the time. Now let's jump into today's case. Jason and Deborah Carells live in Round Lake, Illinois with their three children. Round Lake is a northern suburb of Chicago, and the two of them got married when their oldest son, Bryant, was just a baby, and he's now five years old. And Bryant loved Sonic, science, video games. He was also set to start kindergarten in the fall and was so excited for that. He also wanted to be an astronaut. Their middle daughter, her name is Cassidy, and she is three years old. And she is described as kind of a sour patch kid. You know the saying, like, first they're sour, then they're sweet. First they'll, like, do something rambunctious or mean or, you know, tease you. And then they cuddle up to you and they're all sweet. So sour and sweet and a girly girl by all means. And lastly, their youngest child's name is Gideon, and Gideon is just two years old and a mama's boy through and through. He loved watching movies, cuddling, and just being with his mom at all times. However, despite having three beautiful children, Deborah and Jason's relationship had been anything but healthy. And Deborah had made allegations that the relationship has been both physically and mentally abusive. She also had stated that she is the primary caretaker and takes care of all three of the kids while Jason just sits around and plays video games all day. 
Apparently, he hasn't had a job since November of last year, and since then has just kind of fallen into this downward cycle of gaming and really just mentally checking out. So unmotivated, unhappy, and not a real pleasant person to be around. The two of them seem to have been very on and off to throughout their relationship, not bringing much stability to the house with three young and growing kids. But apparently, there has also been a mental health issue at play here as well in regards to Jason. Jason has long suffered and struggled with different issues, and Deborah has said that she knew about Jason's mental health issues, but that he has always refused treatment. In fact, when Jason joined the military, he actually announced it at his father's funeral and said that he wanted to join so he could die. Which people of sound mind don't just say things like that or wish things like that. So was this a cry for attention or was it a genuine cry for help? In May of this year, Deborah had decided that she had had enough of the back and forth with Jason and his seemingly new, unmotivated lifestyle. She packed up and left with her kids and she set off for a healthier life. But leaving a spouse and with children in the mix, she knew that this could possibly get very messy with custody arguments, spousal support. I mean, you know how it goes. So Deborah knew deep down that in order to make this work and make it clean, she was going to have to file for divorce. So that's what she planned to do. And she reached out to a lawyer with plans to file for full custody. So this was different from the times before when she would leave Jason and come back reuniting and moving forward like they had done so many times before. Reaching out to a lawyer meant finality and the pursuit of closure, something she hadn't done yet before. When Jason found out how serious Deborah was and that she did hire a lawyer and had every intention of making this a permanent separation, he was not happy. Nevertheless, as this was unfolding, Deborah did her best to keep the lives of her three small children as peaceful and as normal as possible, attempting at co-parenting with Jason throughout May and the beginning of June. Deborah even decided to let her kids stay with Jason over the weekend of June 11th. Although she was going for full custody, she recognized a need for the kids to have a father-child relationship, and she wanted to foster that. She was hopeful that they could find a new peaceful balance with each other in this new normal that they were marching towards. So when she said goodbye to her three small children, ages five, three, and two years old, before they started their weekend with Jason, she had no idea that it would be the last time she ever saw her babies. And that Sunday night when she spoke with them on the phone, she had no idea that that would be the last time she would ever speak with them. On Monday around 1.40 p.m., Deborah went over to their once shared family home to pick up the kids for a doctor's appointment. She had spoken to Jason not long before and even invited him to the doctor's appointment in effort to get him more involved in the kids' day-to-day -day lives, again, trying to put the kids first and make peaceful co-parenting the priority. When she went into the house to pick them up, Jason was nowhere to be found, though. So she started calling out for Jason and for the kids and checking each room as she made her way through the house until she reached one of the bedrooms. And when she entered that room, she found her three babies, lifeless on a bed. Deborah immediately and frantically called 911. And when officers got there, there was no hesitation that there was foul play here. Not only was Jason himself missing, but Jason's car was missing too. He had fled the scene. Not long after, officers found a note that Jason had left behind, and it contained the words, if I can't have them, neither can you. But he could have them. Even though Deborah was going for full custody, she was allowing Jason every opportunity to spend time with the kids, even allowing them to stay with him for that entire weekend. What an absolutely horrible and selfish thing to do. To hate your children's other parent so much that you literally kill your own children is just beyond me. It is absolutely awful. And not just to inflict that pain and heartbreak to someone you once loved as some sort of form of sick retaliation, but to selfishly snuff out these three innocent children's lives and rob them of any opportunity to grow up, to become an astronaut like little five-year-old Bryant wanted to be, and just live life is the most heartless and evil thing a parent can do to their child. And Jason did this to three of his children. So despite the focus being on this tragedy that was unfolding before everybody's eyes, officers had to direct their attention to a bigger task at hand, finding the person responsible. So officers turned their attention to finding Jason, who was an immediate person of interest. 
When Jason's red Nissan Maxima was spotted, police began following him so that they could apprehend him. But Jason wasn't going to go down easy, and he led officers on a 17-minute high-speed chase. The chase ended when he drove his car off the interstate bridge and crashed. Once he was in custody, he went to two different hospitals to receive treatment for injuries. And while in custody, he also made incriminating statements to the officers about him being involved in the death of his children. He also told police that he apparently tried multiple times to unalive himself as well after he had killed his children, but that apparently he was unsuccessful with those attempts. Those statements were also later confirmed by blood that was found at the house, which was not the children's blood, but was his blood. The scanner audio also mentioned lots of cuts, so it's very likely that he tried cutting himself as a means of executing this unaliving. But personally, I have some questions here, because he clearly had no problem executing the murder of his three children, but now you somehow have trouble executing your own death, even though you say you made several attempts. How serious were the attempts? And the cuts that were found on his body, were they surface cuts or were they deep lacerations? Could the cuts and blood left behind have been intentional, almost as if to somehow prove down the line that you suffered from a mental break and then had instant regret? Because I can't help but wonder, and not that I would ever condone someone taking their own life or encourage them to try harder, so to speak, but I just wonder if he really did try and if he tried the multiple times like he claims he did. Because it's my opinion that if he were so regretful and dead set on ending his own life, he would have tried until he was successful, rather than leave that note and flee. I also think that the note wouldn't have sounded so vengeful and perhaps would have read something more like, I can't live without my kids, something making it more sound more regretful rather than an attack on Deborah. I don't know, something just doesn't feel right here especially as we get into the cause of death of his children and just how hands-on Jason really was. There was a press conference on June 14th announcing three charges of first-degree murder, and the cause of death was also revealed there. WGN, but my question is, why would he give a reason as to why or motive? At this point, at this point, since the investigation is going, we're only going to release the fact that he did make a statement. Uh, to the officers that responded and scene had that on body worn camera right now but we're still developing this case this is still fresh and we are still running leads and completing the investigation i apologize but this tape is not working very well this is starting to break with cbs did he say how he killed the kids and these are his kids right sorry if you'd like to step up good afternoon Steve Newton, N-E-W-T-O-N, uh, Chief Deputy with the Lake County Coroner's Office. Um, we did conduct autopsies this morning on the three children, and I just received word the um, third one has been completed and that the preliminary cause of death in all three children is consistent with drowning. Drowning. Jason had drowned his three small children in the family bathtub, a very personal and hands-on way to take someone's life, where you literally have to be looking at them one by one and hold them underwater and wait for them to become unresponsive. So again, I ask, if he was capable of that, how was he not capable of himself? Surface cuts or real attempted lacerations? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Deborah spoke out after the press conference and gave a truly heart-wrenching interview. Okay, um, Deborah, uh, first, just tell me what is going through your mind right now after learning of what happened in court today, and tell me about your children. My children were absolutely amazing. They were three beautiful little souls that didn't deserve this. I should have sticked to my guns and not had their father see them. But, you know, I thought what was right is that the father should be involved. The father should see them. Um, he always said he would never do anything to the kids. You know, never thought anything of it. 
And I have regret every day of my life that I, 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 I let him see those kids because I would, I would never have thought that he would have done something so tragic like this. Um, what, what happened in court today, a $10 million bond. Um, what's your reaction to that? I wish it was no bond. I was hearing that about no bond. Like, obviously I would pretty much think his family couldn't afford a million dollars, but no bond would have been better for me because he doesn't deserve to get out. Can you tell me a little bit more about the, the kind of kids that your little ones were? Brian, he was five years old. He was going to start kindergarten this year. Um, and he was super excited to start kindergarten. He was super duper smart. Anything you asked, he had a question for everything and anything. And his response would always be, why, why, why? And at some points I had to say, ask Google, because I don't know why, you know, with certain things like science and everything. He loved Sonic. He loved video games, but he did it to the extent compared to what his father did. His father constantly played games and neglected his family, where Brian did it, but he always wanted me to interact with him and play with him. He was the smartest kid in the world. And he wanted to be an astronaut to go to the moon. He was, he always told me, don't worry, mommy, I'll always take care of you. And that was Brian. He was just, he was my man. He was the only man I needed in my life. And Cassidy, Cassidy. She was my mini me. She was a sour patch kid. She, oh, she was the sweetest girl in the world, but she could also be the evilest. You know, she was a typical woman, <laughs> a typical woman who she could be the sweetest person. But then if you, you got her angry, she would come at you. I didn't have to worry about the safety of my boys because I knew their sister would take control and handle it all. You know, she loved her makeup. She loved her nail polish. She loved she loved everything girly, no matter how like tomboyish and like strong she was. She still loved her girly stuff. And she loved to eat, just like me. Anything and everything. She would eat, eat, eat. And I loved it. We were eating buddies together. And uh Gideon, he was my he was my baby boy. My baby boy that I didn't think I would ever have. And it was like a miracle baby. So, so surprised because they were Irish twins. Um, he loved mommy so much. He was a mama's boy. He loved dinosaurs. He loved Luca. He loved Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, the, the hot dog song. He would bounce his butt to dance. We would all dance together so much. All I wanted to do was dance with my kids. And uh, every time I left or go to the store or anything, he was just crying because he wanted me back. And I just wish I was there for them that day. I wish I was there to grab him before this all happened. Yeah, yeah I left a month ago. It, the, the whole relationship has been rocky and I've thought about leaving. I've left, I've left multiple times actually. And a month ago was kind of like a set in stone. Like, you know, this is it. I need to leave. He hasn't had a job since November. He doesn't do anything around the house. I I'm basically the mother and father of the whole relationship. So I could do it on my own. So why not leave? That's so I felt stupid with him the entire relationship and nobody else has ever made me feel so stupid before. So I left and then I got, I was meeting with a lawyer. I called a lawyer to get everything official. She had said, all I got to do is get the money and then we'll send papers. And um, he found that out. And I think that the fact that he knew I would always come back before and I'd always give in this time, it was different this time. 
I wasn't giving in. I wasn't coming back. It was set in stone that I was leaving because I deserve better. And uh, the most important thing to me were the kids. And he knew that. He knew that nothing mattered to me but those children. And he took them away from me because he knew that would hurt me the most. I mean, at first I was going to do joint custody. And then I thought with his, I know he's been mentally ill. He never accepted to get uh, help for it because he said he could always do it himself. He would never get help for it. Um, And he's like, he's fine. He could do it himself. You know, talk to people. I'm like, okay. But in the end, I I was going to try to get full custody because I I didn't believe him. I, I, I wanted my kids to go outside and play rather than being locked upstairs on the TV with video games constantly every day. I wanted to explore the world with my kids rather than being locked in the house. So I was going to try to get full custody for my kids. The fact that he couldn't do it to himself, he couldn't do it to the children. He always told me he couldn't do anything to his children. My beef was with you, not with the children. So I never worried about the children because you love your children and you should never do anything to your children. So it's like it was me. It was a different story. And I just had so much faith, so much faith, so much love that it would all work out in the end. And it didn't. I, I tried so hard. I offered him money. I offered him to help him get himself up, ready to go. And it's because I wouldn't come back. It just changed everything. She even tried to, before the, the day before the children were discovered, she tried to get him to be included with the, the doctor's appointment. I wanted come to the appointment us to be together as a family. <laughs> he said, I don't know. I, I, I could... I don't want false hope is what he had said. But I said, okay, well, just think about it. If you want to come with a nice point with, with us, please come. Like, I want you there. We had happy times at the last conversation, asking about birthmarks on the kids and the tooths that were lost and all the stuff with the kids. We had really happy time, which was mind-blowing to find out that he had killed our kids right after that conversation right after that conversation because we had a really good conversation so the only thing to rely on is faith before this i thought who could think of jesus and god who could think of them because they took my children away but at this point now that's all you can think about you don't know until you're in this situation that All you can think about is God and Jesus and the ones you've lost because that's the only like amazing feeling you get to know that my kids are with my father uh, up in heaven fishing. They're with my aunt. They're with my grandma telling her, telling them not to touch her drapes. They're, they're all up there right now. So I always thought, I was one of those people, how can you think of religion? F religion. They took your kids away. But when it happens to you, that is the only thing you can think about because you want there to be a better society. You want to know that your kids are safe. You want to know that your kids are there. And you want to know that you can be with your kids someday so that all the other stuff doesn't matter. Like, I will wait till everything happens and I can be with my children one day. (laughs) He was in the military, but he never fought combat. He never fought the actual mental combat that you would fight. He was linguistics, just talking about something. He he, he spoke Arabic. He spoke Arabic barely within Afghanistan so then after that he wanted to join the military so that he could die he had said that at his father's funeral he wanted to join the military so he could die so right there there was mental illness and then the step of our relationship anytime I thought or threatened of leaving he said he wanted to kill you know, after a while, it's just kind of a repetitive thing. He would just use yeah. it as a manipulation, as a manipulation. tactic. Yeah. He never actually did it. So he'd always use it as a manipulation tactic just to keep me around. 
and towards the end he used it as well but he hadn't used it he hadn't used it in the last month or so he was good after like i officially left him for a month he was better and then i um yeah i talked to the kids the night before said i love you so much i can't wait to see you tomorrow and the next day they're gone so yeah So many people told me, do not let him have him. Do not let him have him. He was mentally ill. To leave him constantly. But I was I was mind manipulated that he was a good person, that he was a good father, that all this stuff. And just kept playing over and over and over and over and over, and over again in my mind. So my thing is that if you have an inkling, if you have any kind of theory of no or anything of this person first of all this person says to me that's a guaranteed no do not let them be these kids i don't care if it's a father i don't care if it's a mother i don't care anything do not let them see these kids because these kids love me so much they wouldn't be more than their father and I let them go. My baby had said, this is stay only one day. And I left him longer than if that were the case, it would still be with me today. Just trust your gut. Trust what people say. I don't care if those people are crazy. You trust what they say. I don't care how many courts, how many law officers, how many anybody get involved. Stick to your gut. And keep your kids. Because that is all that matters, because some people out there don't care about them. Jason was originally given a $10 million bond. However, as of June 20th, his bond was revoked, and he is ordered to stay in jail until the trial, which I am thankful for, because one thing that I can never understand or seem to wrap my mind around is why any bond amount is ever set or granted for somebody who takes a child's life. In my opinion, that should immediately equate to held without bond. Because if they do happen to bond out, regardless of the amount, they would have every motive to flee or harm themselves for real this time to avoid prosecution, just like Fotis Doulos in Connecticut. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this case. Do you think that this was solely mental health related? Or do you think that there was some revenge seeking going on here? Also, do you believe Jason's statements to police that he made attempts on himself multiple times afterwards? This is just an awful tragedy, and we, of course, will be following along and updating as more information becomes available and as we go to trial. I'm interested to know if he will accept a plea deal or if this will actually move forward with a trial. And if this does go to trial, I would be interested to see all of the evidence that comes from it. Was this premeditated? Did they find search history on his phone looking for methods to execute his plan? And if so, how far in advance were those searches? There is just still a lot of information to learn and unpack here, so I'm going to be following it very closely. In the meantime, please say a prayer, say send well wishes, do whatever you personally do to manifest, you know, positive thinking and empathy for others and extend that to Deborah because I cannot imagine what this woman must be going through right now with her entire world just crumbling in an instant and losing all three of her small babies in a flash and then dealing with the aftermath and coming to terms with the person who did this and inflicted this pain on them and on you is somebody who you once loved somebody who you loved enough to marry and to bring children into this world and trust to bring children into this world how do you come to terms with that and reconcile that so please just leave your well wishes for Deborah in the comments below as well. And again, I'm curious to know what you think about this. What do you think the true motive and intention was here? And do you believe that Jason was in fact instantly regretful and did make attempts on himself? Or do you think that that was, I don't want to use the word staged, but do you think that that was a surface attempt to then make it look later down the line that he was regretful? I don't know, guys. Um, there's just something tugging at me that is saying it might be going that opposite way. But let me know what you guys think. Thanks again for tuning in with me today. I'm going to keep you updated, so make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And please, to support the channel, don't forget to hit that like button on your way out. And of course, share this link where you can to help generate awareness and spread the word. 
All right, guys, hopefully we get some justice for those three babies soon, and I will let you know where we land with all of this. Until the next case, stay safe. Bye.